So I've had the new M2 MacBook Air for the last two weeks and I've been using it kind of as my main desk setup just to kind of play with it and test it out and see exactly what I like and dislike about it. And definitely stay subscribed because I'm gonna have a dedicated video talking about my experience with this M2 MacBook Air and all the good things and bad things that come with it. But in this video, what I wanna do is talk about my desk setup, all the accessories that I use to enhance my productivity overall and also give you some ideas of some accessories that you might wanna add to your desk setup, whether or not it is that M2 MacBook Air. So without further ado, here's everything that I use for my desk setup of my 15 inch MacBook Air. Let's get into it. So just to briefly tell you which M2 MacBook Air version I went with, I did go with the absolute baseline model. So we're talking eight gigs of RAM, 256 gigs of storage. I did get it in that midnight blue colorway, which again, to each their own, it is a fingerprint magnet. But for me, it is my favorite MacBook color that we've had. But that is the MacBook Air that I went with. And like I mentioned, I will have a dedicated video because there is a lot that I wanna unpack after using it for two weeks as my main kind of desktop solution. So definitely stay subscribed and comment down below if you have any additional questions about my experience. But when it comes to the actual desk setup itself, we gotta start with this desk right behind me. So I've spoken about this desk in the past and so far it's been my absolute favorite desk to use from a smart desk perspective. Now this is the FlexiSpot Odin. And what makes this thing so special is the actual quality you get for the price. So I'm all about price to performance ratio and kind of getting that dollar to stretch as far as you can. And what I like about this first and foremost is that it's actually four legs instead of two. Most sit and stand desks have two legs coming down in the center of the actual desk itself and then four feet versus this one is four legs. So what that does is that when it gets that peak height of standing height whenever you are standing, normally when you lean on a standing desk, you do get a little bit of wiggle, a little bit of jiggle whenever you are kind of leaning on it or moving around. But with the fact that this has four legs, it keeps everything very sturdy, even at the tallest point when you are standing. And of course it keeps it sturdy when you are sitting down as well. I ended up getting it in this gray kind of wood finish on the top for the tabletop itself. And I went with the 60 by 30 frame. You could go up to 72 or I believe even 84 if you have the space for it. But for me, 60 is more than enough, especially because I was coming from a desk that was 52 inches. So that extra kind of eight inches does really go a long way. And again, it's extremely sturdy and very quality. It can hold up to, I believe, 450 pounds, which for me isn't really necessary, but I know a lot of people with gaming desk setups and multiple monitors. For me, I'm a single monitor person. I use my iPad or my MacBook Air, so there's not a ton of weight on it, but I have been able to actually sit on it myself and I'm around 200 pounds and it moves me very easily. So if you add two of me or if you have a ton of weight on there, you should be totally fine. So that is the Odin Desk by FlexiSpot. I'll definitely link everything that I'm gonna talk about in the description below if you guys do wanna check it out. And now, when it comes to the chair, I use a chair by the company called Hone. So it's H-O-N, and it's a very sturdy chair. It works exactly how I want it to. It doesn't get to that price point of like the Herman Millers and those super premium ones, but it's got everything that you would want from those premium looking ones, right? You have the airflow on the back, the kind of mesh finish, the ability to move it up and down, to tilt it, to change the actual size and the height of the actual armrest. So it's got everything that you would need, and it is an upgrade from what I had before, which was kind of like a throw around Ikea chair that I used for four years. Now this one, I will be using this one for as long as I can, and it is very comfortable. So if you guys need a new chair that won't break the bank, this one by Hone is exactly what I wanted. So now let's talk about what I have on the desk itself, and we're gonna start from this side over here. But the first thing that you see is that lamp itself. So the lamp is, by, I believe, by a company called Lamical. I could be wrong, but I'll definitely link it down below if I do find it. I've had it for like four or five years, and what I like about it is that it has touch controls, lets you change the ambient color so you can get very warm color or very kind of like a bluish hue to get it more of a cool color. It has different brightness levels. It has got a knob for easy controls. It works perfectly because it also has a lot of different joints to be able to move it to whatever position that you want to. And then on top of that, I am able to put my little RJ plant. If you don't know who RJ is, I'll link his channel down below, a fellow tech creator so definitely check him out. But we joke around saying that he's the one that brought the Ikea plant over. So I do have my RJ plant sitting right there on top of the control panel of the lamp itself. And then I did fall victim to buying one of those Stanley cups. So that is what I have. And I always have that filled up with some water. And now the next item that you see in terms of tech is the iPad. So I do have my M1 12.9 inch iPad Pro, which I use as my main editing machine, as my main YouTube machine, as my main kind of throw around device to be able to get stuff done around the house. But I do like to have it on my stand right here because I use it in multiple fashions. Sometimes I use it as my main device to actually plug in and have external monitor support to my BenQ monitor, which we'll touch on in a little bit. But other times, especially when I'm using the 15 inch MacBook Air, I like to have it there with universal control. So I still have the operating system of the iPad, but I don't actually have to leave the iPad or use a separate set of controls or a separate set of peripherals to be able to control it. 
So that is my M1 iPad Pro, and I do think I'm gonna be upgrading it here soon. I'm kind of waiting to see what Apple does because, again, I have the 8 gig version, not the 16 gig version, and now I'm getting to the point where I need a little bit more RAM for everything that I use it for, especially for things like these videos, which I do edit fully on the iPad Pro. But that is standing on my MagFloat stand, which I've had for forever. It attaches via magnets. It kind of gives it that Pro Display XDR kind of stand look, which I do like to see. And then the iPad itself is sitting on a Grove Made monitor stand. Now this Grove Made monitor stand I've had for a long time. Grove Made makes some very high quality wood accessories or wooden material accessories. And again, they last forever, they're extremely sturdy. They are on the more expensive side. So this one is something that you are gonna pay a premium because it is handmade, it is very sturdy, it's made of real wood. So you are gonna pay a premium for it, but you will not be disappointed by the quality. And again, it's one of those things that's gonna last forever and you probably won't need to buy another one unless you want a different color. But what I really like about it is that it kind of gives you some extra table real estate. You're able to lift up your monitor if you are using it as a monitor stand, but also give yourself some more surface area both underneath and on top. So you get a little bit more action in terms of what you can put on your desk. And now GroveMate has their whole little ecosystem of different accessories for their accessories. So you can see that on the left hand side over here, I am using one of their cubbies in their drawers. So they have a cubby underneath, which is where I put my Magic Keyboard and also any other keyboards that I'm testing for the actual iPad. So I have two different Magic Keyboards, the original and then one that's kind of a cheaper alternative. And then also on top of that, I have a drawer for a bunch of miscellaneous stuff, right? So I have an SSD in there. I usually have a lightning cable and a USB-C cable for whenever I need them at a grass or in some other knickknacks like Apple Pencils that I'm testing because I'm always testing Apple Pencils alternatives and I'll link down one that I really like below for you guys to check out it's like 40 bucks and it even charges magnetically the way that the Apple Pencil 2 does which is one of those things that I never thought would happen but now the Apple Pencil 2 being five years old you know there's got to be a change or some sort of update to that Apple Pencil at some point and if you keep going across you do see my monitor so the monitor I'm using is a 32 inch design monitor by BenQ and I absolutely love this thing I wish it got just a tiny bit brighter but overall, it's been my favorite monitor that I've ever used. It's 32 inches, so it's the perfect height. And this is also the Ergo Arm Edition. So they do have two different versions. They have the version which has the stand, which I have used before, but I ended up returning it because I wanted the Ergo Arm. And the Ergo Arm is so sturdy. It moves in any direction that you want it to. You can move it up and down, side to side. You can rotate it fully 90 degrees. And it's just, it's, it's amazing how well built the arm is itself because it is a heavy monitor, but it's making it feel like it's almost only like a pound or two because you're able to move it with just a push of a finger. But it's also sturdy enough so if you run into your desk, it's not gonna move. It's kind of one of those perfect balances to make sure that it's sturdy enough to be able to withstand any kind of incidental bumps, but also kind of fluid enough to be able to move easily. Now this monitor is a single cable solution, so it does come with a Thunderbolt cable. I plug it directly into my MacBook Air or directly into my iPad Pro, and then it populates. And then also on the rear, it does kind of act as a hub. It's got HDMI ports, it's got USB-A ports, even micro USB, even USB-B as well, if you guys even know what that one is. But it's got a bunch of different ports that you can play with, and also additional USB-C ports. So if you wanna plug in, let's say, an SSD directly to there, you can do that as well. So that's what I love about the BenQ monitor. Perfectly priced, has the actual hub, it's a single cable solution. It's a 4K monitor, it moves around easily, highly recommend it, and like I said, everything will be linked down below. And now underneath the monitor, which is again underneath that Grove Made stand, I have a couple of things. The first one is this kind of, basically a, an advanced power strip. It's called the Power Cloud, and I believe the company is called iSwift. And this Power Cloud has three AC ports. So the way I have it is I plug it into the bottom, which I do have a power strip down there, but then on top, on the top of the actual Power Cloud, you do have three AC ports, but then also, you have a 65 watt USB-C PD port, you have another 18 watt PD port, and then a 18 watt USB-A port. So whenever I need to charge miscellaneous things, like for instance, my Bluetooth mouse, or my Bluetooth keyboard, or whatever I need to, when they are kind of smaller knickknacks, where they don't have dedicated power, like when the iPad is on the stand, or this charging station that I have over here, which I'll touch on in a little bit. So that is the power cloud. I've had it for, I think, two years now at this point. It works extremely well, gets the job done. And like I said, it's nice to be able to have kind of more AC power outlets on your desk itself, as well as just directly USB-C and USB-A ports. And then next to that, I have my external keyboard, which is my Satechi X1 Slim. It is my favorite keyboard to use with any Mac computer, or pretty much any computer. I have not gone into that whole new fad of the mechanical keyboards. I don't know why, I just, I've tried multiple of them. I just don't like the feel of it. I don't like the sound of it. For me, I like everything smaller, low profile, thinner, because I don't know, that's just what I've been used to and that's how I type much faster. So the Satechi X1 Slim is the best one-to-one -one comparison to the actual Magic Keyboard that Apple sells. I'm just hoping one day they're able to add an actual Touch ID sensor onto there because once it has that, then it's game over because it's chiclet style. It has better colorways, it can connect up to three different devices at once, and it's got everything that you would need from a Bluetooth keyboard, and it's fairly priced. And then also I have the Magic Trackpad, because 
Sometimes I do use the laptop in clamshell mode and I like to be able to have my external keyboard, my external mouse, as well as the trackpad for gesture controls. So that is what I use. And now if we come in front, speaking of the mouse, I use also a Satechi mouse, the M1 mouse, which is very self-explanatory. I think it's a $30 mouse, connects to one device. But again, the Satechi M1 mouse is a great mouse, a Bluetooth mouse, which lasts forever on battery life. And then my desk mat itself is the Orbikey XL desk mat that comes in the sandstone or the black colorway. If you guys made it to this part of the video, I am actually giving away the black one that I just replaced with the sandstone one. So if you guys definitely want to enter, just leave a comment down below and then I'll respond in a week to see who won and I'll announce it in the next video. Again, I'm going to announce it in a future video, so do not fall for any scams that happen in the comments. But just leave a comment saying that you want the XL Orbikey mat. This is for US only, so keep that in mind. And we'll be sure to give that one away because I just replaced it with the sandstone color, which kind of matches the new aesthetic of this desk versus my last one, which was an all white countertop. But what I really like about this desk mat is that it has multiple functions. And that's something that you don't really hear too much when it comes to just kind of desk mats. So the first thing you see is that it does have a felt bottom. So the felt bottom kind of makes sure that you don't have any scratches or any kind of imprints or any kind of color saturating into the wood itself of the desk because I have seen that happen with other desk mats but then there's actually two sections to this so it comes in two layers you have that felt bottom and if you flip up the actual leather piece it's kind of like a little secret compartment I guess you would call it where you can hide a couple papers or maybe put a folder down there that you don't want to put away fully but you do need some access to it later so you can do that if you just lift it up slide whatever you need under there and then you kind of forget about it and it's out of sight but sometimes it does become out of mind because you forget that stuff is there but then also there's a magnetic strip on the top of it. Now this magnetic strip is basically for cable organization, but I actually use it for Apple Pencils. So Apple Pencils normally have some sort of magnetic attachment. I drop my Apple Pencil in there and I know that it's not gonna go anywhere. They also include one magnetic cable organizer so you can put a cable through there if you need quick access to a lightning cable or a USB-C cable. So, but again, very well made. Orbikey is known for their high quality products. And again, it's one of the few companies that's able to add an extra function to something that you would never think needed to have some extra function. And then some final miscellaneous products that I wanted to talk about. So you can see that all the way on the right hand side of the actual Grove made stand, I have a Mo Max laptop clamshell mode kind of stand that you would put on there. And again, this is one of my favorite and cheapest products because it's just so well designed. It's made out of plastic, so it's not super premium, but what I like about it is that it uses the weight of the laptop itself to close on itself so it doesn't go anywhere. Because it can be any thickness, any thinness, any real weight, and it just closes on itself. And then when you want to lift it up, you just pick it up and it, and it opens up for you so it doesn't get stuck on there. And this is less than $20. This is a great gift for anybody that needs to have a laptop stand and they like to have it in clamshell mode. And then I also have Momax's 3-in-1 charger, very self-explanatory. It is a MagSafe certified charger. You can charge your iPhone, you can charge your AirPods, and you can charge your Apple Watch. It doesn't fast charge your Apple Watch, so it's not one of the new, new ones. But for me, which is somebody that just kind of charges their Apple Watch once overnight, it works perfectly fine. So that is my 3-in-1 charger that I've had on there for, you know, almost a year now at this point. And I'm finding it hard to replace with anything else that's out there because I like the all-white aesthetic and it just works very well. And then the very last thing that I want to show off is something that not a lot of people know about, but on the actual leg on the right hand side, I put another charger down there. Now this is by a company called Rolling Square. They basically have this tiny 1400 milliamp hour external battery or portable battery that you can bring with you anywhere. And it's charging on its own little charging station. It is a proprietary charging station, so you need to charge it via that. But once that's all set up, it's very easy to use. You just magnetically attach it, it starts charging, and 1400 milliamp hours can get you, you know, anywhere from 20 to 50%, depending on which iPhone you have. Like if you have the 13 mini, it could help out a decent amount. If you have a 14 Pro Max, it's not gonna help too much, but it will help you at the very end of the day if you are running out of battery, especially for somebody that's running the iOS 17 betas because that's killing everybody's battery life. But I like this look, I like the aesthetic, I like how easy it is to use, and the fact that it just kind of fits right there on the leg itself, it's always charged up when I need it, is a nice little plus. But that is everything that I have on the desk. For the most part, yes, I mentioned a bunch of products, but it stays pretty concise and tight. Like I don't have too many kind of out there things. I don't have any speakers. I just use AirPods for my speakers for audio or just use whatever audio is coming out of the laptop or the iPad because those speakers are good enough for me. But overall, the desk is one of the most quality desks that I've ever used. My BenQ monitor is my favorite monitor that I've ever used as well. And overall, I just, I've been happy with this desk setup. And once you have a nice desk setup that you're happy with, you just kind of want to go and work even more and sit down and kind of be productive. So that is my productivity desk setup with my 15 inch MacBook Air. As I mentioned, definitely leave a comment for the Orbit Key XL Mac giveaway. It will be the black colorway. And also stay subscribed because like I mentioned, I will be having a dedicated video on my overall thoughts on the 15 inch MacBook Air. You definitely want to hear what I have to say. But that is going to do it for this video. If you made it to the end, leave a little dolphin in the comments down below so I know you made it to the end. And if you guys want to watch some more iOS, Mac OS, or iPad OS videos, click on one of these right here. And until next time, I'm Fernando, and I'm out of here, everybody. Peace. Thank you.